big developments, big steps forward. I want to give those to you today. The first thing we are talking about is risky business. The debt ceiling right now looks like it doesn't matter because the government took that step. I'll show you what you need to know. The second thing is the key. Yes, we are talking about something today so important. I'll get into that as soon as I can. And the third thing is the wild trends. Certain factors are up. Certain factors are down. It is all over the place. And I want to bring that information to you and so much more. Let's go. As expected, the government has agreed to a short-term debt limit increase. Time and time and time again, you will see this happen. The government says, no way, no how, we're not going to pass this bill. It's not going to happen. And then what do they do? They get right until the last minute. They find a way to temporarily postpone it and eventually agree to a watered down version of the original. This is always the case. There could be this disruption, but they're telling you that the sky is going to fall and everything's going to be disrupted for such a long period of time. And this is going to be the end of it. And ah, just stop. Now, of course, looking at this, what I had said previously was that the market hadn't rocketed up in a straight line because it was waiting on a few factors, the Federal Reserve and their actions. We'll see that October, November timeframe, likely November, considering we're already in early October. Then you look at the debt ceiling that needs to be resolved. They need to pass that. The third thing would be what the infrastructure bill and, you know, what is it going to be? Six trillion first, then it's four trillion. Now they're talking about, will they even get 1.5 trillion? We'll see. The market just wants something to be passed. Okay. So these are the three primary factors. And already it looks like this is going to go through. That is a boost to the market. What else is a boost to the market? This ADP employment reports, September's data, just showing you if you go to it, you will see green, 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 everything is doing well. That, however, shows the Federal Reserve, here's some good statistics for you. You can't use that excuse anymore, but I'm sure they will anyway. Now let's get into the real meat of the story today. This episode is really about what's happening with energy, and we'll get more into the key in a moment. EU 28 gas prices will continue climbing until the market sees signs of actual demand destruction, most likely announcements of temporary factory closures, longer holiday shutdowns over Christmas, and reductions in street lighting and commercial building thermostat targets. So this right here comes from John Kemp. I bring you that information uh, generally from Reuters. And what we're seeing here is that the prices are going to keep going up and up and up. And that has an impact on everything else. If energy is expensive, everything down the line is as well. This is something that I want to look at because right now what we have, particularly in Europe, is a lot of the green energy. You now, the green energy hasn't kept up with you know the, the amount of money that's being put in it, what's behind it, all of that hasn't kept up with the demand currently. Now they're trying to get away from coal, they're trying to get away from you know oil and so on. So they're moving to wind, solar, all these different things. However, at this time, they really need a boost and part of that you know the the head quant from uh jp morgan top guy there basically said and it's marco uh kolanovic i believe it's pronounced basically saying that they need to go into this new mode of okay we have our goals in mind for the green energy and so on but we need to really get pumping we need to bring this stuff in right now to resolve the crisis but you've got coal shortages as well. And why? Largely because they were doing away with it, saying we don't need this stuff anymore. We've got green energy. But at this time, look, just like many years ago, you, you heard, uh, you know, you can have your coal business, but we're just going to tax you to death. Now look what's happening. 
Coal shortages pushed prices up, way on economies. Ahead of Glasgow, Glasgow Climate Summit resurgent economies, Chinese demand highlight challenges to weaning the world off of a fossil fuel. All right, so we're looking at this here further along. Coal supply shortages are pushing prices for the fuel to record highs and laying bare the challenges to win the global economy off of one of its most important energy sources. I think that's key because people don't understand how much coal is actually being used. If you start cutting off the production of it to a great degree, well then, what happens in these times of crisis? Right now, this is a crisis. Don't be fooled by, you know, you've seen the S&P at 4300 and change there's a crisis going on it's not necessarily going to show up in the stock market all right they're just telling you but by the way 40 percent of the world's energy just in case you're interested one of the big factors here was china saying oh yeah you know australia you know how we import a lot of our coal from you uh yeah well we're having a bit of a little fight a lover's quarrel and so we're not going to take it in anymore well they've got huge demand especially right now and they can't keep up and so this is part of the issue so china starts devouring the demand from the globe and it is becoming a serious issue on so many different levels that has a domino effect European industry buckles under a worsening energy squeeze. Power prices are hitting fresh records as winter approaches. approaches. China is already forcing some businesses to re reduce their actual production. This is unbelievable, okay? What we are seeing now. So the suggestion here, do they reverse their policies temporarily in order to make this not be so much of a crisis. Is that going to happen? Is that the key to this particular situation? Some are saying that, but only time will tell. First, the chart. Just look at it. Expensive gas EU natural gas benchmark contract has doubled in the last two months. Just imagine that, okay? Unbelievable. European industry is being pushed closer to the breaking point as the region's energy crisis worsens by the day. Power and energy prices are hitting fresh records almost daily. That's why I bring those to you. It's new every single day, it seems. And some energy intensive companies have temporarily shut operations because they've become too expensive to run. As winters approach and the Europeans start to turn on their heaters, the squeeze will intensify, pushing more executives to tough decisions about keeping the plants open. I will bring you one of those examples in a moment. But this right now, we haven't hit the worst of it because we're in October. What's going to happen by the time we're in December, in January? This is going to hit real hard. They're talking about this particular one. I don't know if this was the article. I'll just show you now. This ammonia producer is among the those that have been forced into drastic steps. The German company, which burns through 640 gigawatts of natural gas each year, it said that it will cut its production by 20% and saying... It doesn't make sense to make ammonia at these price levels. A complete production stop looms if the government doesn't act. This is massive and something needs to be done to resolve it because you, you the individual, are paying an extremely high price for your energy and it's going to go ballistic. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments. What should the government do, if anything? What are your thoughts? Please put that in the comment section below because I need you to share your details so that we can have this conversation. We can't just watch it. We at least need to have this discussion. But gas eases after 60% surge as Putin offers to stabilize the markets. So, hey, he's got a product to offer. Russia's got a product. Let's pump it in and that would you would see, uh, obviously, reduce the burden. Dutch and UK prices hit fresh highs earlier in the day. Russia is ready to help stabilize the global market. So Russia may come in to save the day. We'll see. The prices, though, of course, have gone up considerably. So we don't know what's going to happen at this point, but I wanted to bring you all of the details. All right? 
Let's talk about it. Let's discuss it. This is in here. You know, the the prices have come down somewhat, but of course, as they mentioned, we don't know what's going to happen in the in these coming days, right? Because how much demand there is at this time and yet production is, you know, just not keeping up. U.S. gas tanks, U.S. gas futures all but wiped out yesterday's gains on Putin's remarks. This is just showing you over the last four trading days. Let's break it down in the Money GPS Insights. Prices of energy have reached critical levels right now at this time. Under current policies, prices are likely to remain elevated and possibly increase even more. Watch all of these details very closely to understand as the inflationary madness continues to roll on. Now, apparently the UN is warning of a looming global water crisis. This one, in my opinion, is bigger than all of the rest. You could see there's droughts in some areas. You know, there's problems with the water supply in general. What are we going to do about this in the future? One of the good aspects of Canada is that they've got massive freshwater reserves. Those will probably be sold off to the US and China, different story altogether. But if you believe that future conflicts will be fought over water, hit that thumbs up. Because I think a lot of people are going to agree with me on that one. I do believe that that is, in fact, the case. Experts say that prices at grocery stores will continue to rise for over a year. This is unbelievable, of course. Just seeing where they have gone for many people. They've, like, I know in the comments, so many people, um, the price of this used to be this, and now it's this. Or it used to be 12 ounces, now it's 9 ounces. And you just figure it out. Look, that's a price increase of this much. They can trick you all they want, but ultimately what happens at the end of the month, how much did you spend? That's it. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, this ounce or that ounce or inflation rate, this inflation. What did you spend? Now, a lot of people, they say, well, you know what? Uh, I can't afford this, so I started doing this. Well, that's really, you know, you, you can change your standard of living, but that is not the way it should be. Really shouldn't be this way. You shouldn't have to sacrifice for basic elements, but yet we do today because the prices are ridiculous. Dry bulk shipping rates hit $80,000 per day as buyers scramble for coal. So of course, this brings me back to what I was talking about a few minutes ago. Amid coal shortages and power outages, bulker owners stand to gain. So you want to know who stands to gain? There we go. Look at this for cars. Inventories at dealers remain well below historical levels, hitting a new low right now. What does that do? Pushes the prices up again. So we'll see what happens. Used cars might be purchased instead. Again, I'll give you the used car index when I can, when I get the new information. And on the Evergrande note, Blinken urges China to act responsibly in Evergrande crisis. Quote, China has to make sovereign economic decisions for itself. Weird way to say it. It's sovereign, so it would it would make its own decisions, but not with the U.S. that uh, overthrows a lot of governments. Anyway, we also know that what China does economically is going to have a profound ramification, profound effects on literally the entire world because all of our economies are so intertwined. And this is what I have told you a thousand times before. Because of what has happened with globalization, there you can't have a problem in one area that doesn't affect the rest. A lot of people ignorantly say that that doesn't matter, don't worry, that's over there, it's never going to be over here. doesn't work like that. Okay, Whether we like it or not, not just the financial system. The financial system is, is like this, but going a level deeper, you realize that there's a lot of connections here, what they have done. Okay? And this is a little bit of humor. I tried to, you know, include a little bit of funniness, funny, you know, anything, a joke or something when I can. And this is definitely a joke. ECB said to study new bond buying plan when the crisis tool ends. 
Yes, that's right. Have no fear. The ECB will always be there to devalue the euro as much as possible. So right now they're doing emergency measures. But when that ends, it's just going to be a permanent one. As if anybody, as if anybody on the face of the earth could have thought, <laughs> would have thought that the ECB wouldn't continue to print. Uh, all right, Bitcoin news. Yes, the SEC has kicked the can on Bitcoin ETF approval, but that is for the physically backed ones under the 33 Act. The futures ETFs filed under the 40 Act are very much alive and likely on schedule, and they apparently believe a 75% chance of approval. They just give you the different dates from October 18th to November 1st. There are five in this schedule. It's not the first ETF that would be out there, okay? So this is not new ground anymore, but for the US, a different story, of course. So let's see what happens. Uh, this is just one of the reasons why Bitcoin is surging right now. Last time I checked, about 55,000. At, at this time, you know, we've gone 64,000 or, or so was probably the peak. And now uh, looking like it's just going straight up. So we'll see what happens as a result of all of this. I've got so much to cover and generally not enough time. If you want to make sure you get all the details, you need to be an insider. It's totally free. I email you five times a week. You can join right here at this card or the moneygps.com. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up to support the channel. I appreciate that. It's pretty easy. Just click the like. Thank you very much. If you haven't seen this video yet, I don't know why. You gotta check it out, click it, and I'll see you there.